Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today, I'm going to be revisiting my favorite products from the year 2019. I always enjoy watching other YouTubers sort of, you know, revisit their favorites, talk about how they're feeling about them now. So I thought I would do the same. I think I've done one of these videos in the past. I will link that below if you're interested in checking it out. I think maybe I did a recap of my 2017, 2018 uh, favorites. I think I merged that into one video. So this video is going to be focused on the 2019 favorites. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. In these favorite videos the last few years, what I have done is I've talked about my favorite boxes from the Clean Beauty Box as well as from the Box Walla. So my favorite box from the Clean Beauty Box from 2019 was the box where they focused on Moss. There were two products from Moss Skincare. The first one was Potency, the Ceramide Hydrating Cream. I think maybe in 2019 it was called the Hydrating Milk. I'm not exactly sure, but I think there has been a name change. So I still love Potency. I do not have it with me here in my collection. I don't have it anymore. Um, it's not because I don't like it. I really, really love it. It's one of those emulsion type serums slash lotions that you guys know that I love. Uh, this one is definitely on the heavier side as compared to maybe the Live Botanical Ambient Moisture Liquid or the Heart of Gold Sweet Briar Hydrating Nectar. Both of those are a little bit uh, more lightweight. Potency, I would say, is definitely heavier. But while I absolutely love Potency, it is quite expensive. It is definitely the most expensive of these uh, serum emulsion slash lotions that I adore. It is the most expensive one that I have tried and really loved. Uh, it is $145 for 30 mils. And they also do offer a 10 mil size, which is $63. So quite expensive. Like I said, definitely the most expensive uh, of this type of product that I have ever tried. Um, but I do really love it. So if money is not an issue for you, then I highly, highly recommend it. If you don't have the money to spend on it or you want something that is a little less expensive, definitely check out the Lip Botanical uh, Ambient Moisture Liquid, which is being featured right now in the Clean Beauty Box. So I will definitely link that below if you're interested in grabbing one of those because that's a great deal right now. And then the other product that was featured in that box that I really, really enjoyed quite a bit was the Micellar Cleansing Essence. I don't know if the name has changed to Rosewater Advanced Micellar Water. I'm pretty Pretty sure that it has. Again, I think you know, Moss Skincare went through um, some branding changes and some name changes. This one too was a product that I really loved. I actually enjoyed using this micellar water. I don't use them that much, but when I do, I really enjoyed the Moss one. Uh, this one too is very expensive. It is $65 for four ounces, or you can get a two ounce travel size for $39. So again, I probably would have repurchased this if these weren't so expensive. To give you a comparison, the Audacity Blue Aura Cleansing Water, which I actually really, really did enjoy, um, is $39 for four ounces. So as compared to the Moss one, that is uh, two ounces for 39, whereas with the Audacity one, you get four, you get, you know, twice the amount for the same price. So in the future, if I do need to purchase a micellar water, I think I would definitely go for the Audacity moving forward. But I do really, really love both of these Moss products. Highly recommend them. Like I said, if money really isn't an issue in terms of purchasing your skincare. Um, I actually do have the Wamisa, I think it's like the botanical flower water, micellar water. So I am getting through that one. I don't totally love it. I think it's okay, but I'm going to finish that one. And then I would probably replenish uh, a micellar water with the Audacity one. So now let's talk about my favorite box Walla beauty box from the year 2019. Probably no shock, it was the one that featured uh, Heart of Gold. So one of the products in there is no longer available. It's been discontinued. That was their Modern Love Gommage. I did really enjoy that product. I really actually liked using it as a moisturizing mask more so than the Gommage, but I'm not gonna talk about it anymore because it is no longer available. Um, the next product in the Heart of Gold box uh, from 2019 with Boxwalla was the Sea Change Cleansing Balm, which I do still have. I completely adore this. I think this might be my third jar of it. And this is what the product looks like inside the jar. It is a lovely, thick, creamy balm, cleansing balm that does rinse off with water. So it is one of those emulsifying cleansers. Uh, so if you prefer a balm cleanser that does rinse off with water, I highly recommend the Sea Change Balm. 
I also love the scent of it. It kind of has this like apple-y chamomile uh, sort of fennel scent. It's just so beautiful. I love it so much. And yes, this has continued to be a favorite of mine over these last couple of years. And then the final product in the Boxwalla Beauty Box featuring Heart of Gold was the Sweet Briar Hydrating Nectar. I still have this. I purchased this not too long ago from Allie. Allie's the creator of Heart of Gold. This, like I keep talking about, one of those emulsion products that acts as like a serum lotion hybrid. Absolutely love it. It is on the lightweight side. So if that is something that you're looking for, I highly recommend it. You can also amp it up in terms of moisturizing. If you want to just add a couple drops of oil, I do that all the time, morning and night. So this still is a continued favorite of mine and will be down the road. So moving to cleansers, I chose the Marie Veronique Pure EO Free Oil Cleanser as one of my favorites from 2019. I have not repurchased this and it's not because I don't love it. I just always have so many cleansers going either that uh, brands are sending to me or I also have repurchased one of my favorite oil cleansers and that's the one from Live Botanical. So I just haven't had the need in the last couple years actually to repurchase this product, but I definitely would. So I wouldn't say that it's my you know absolute favorite oil cleanser, but I really did enjoy it. It had a really lovely uh, thick texture that almost felt like it kind of lathered just slightly when I emulsified it on my face. So thinking about it now, I actually actually did really love it and I would not hesitate to purchase it in the future, especially like on a credo sale or something like that. Um, but I don't really think it's that expensive. I don't have the price listed in front of me right now, but I do think it's a very reasonably priced product. You do get a pretty good amount. I think maybe it's even four ounces. So even though I don't have it in my hands right now, I would definitely uh, not hesitate to purchase this again in the future. I do have a couple of toners slash elixirs that I loved from 2019. Uh, the first one I mentioned was the Live Botanical Seasonal Radiance Elixir, which I do still have in love. Right now though, I just have one of their minis. So I believe this is the one from fall. Yeah, this is the Rose and Tulsi one totally love this product so much. I love all of these seasonal elixirs that Carolyn creates. Carolyn McRory is the creator of Live Botanical, the formulator, and she just does such an excellent job of doing these seasonal elixirs. I still highly recommend them. They are definitely one of my favorite uh, toners slash mists that I use on a daily basis. So yes, this continues to be a favorite of mine. And then I also mentioned the Laurel Hydrating Elixir. Now I don't have that specific specifically, but I do have the Laurel's uh, California Rose Hydrosol and her Frankincense Hydrosol. These were both limited edition from this past holiday season. I love them. They are beautiful. They are gorgeous. And I do still continue to love Laurel's Hydrating Elixir. Definitely check out her website and just see what she has available in sort of this elixir, you know, hydrosol category because I really do recommend them. And then I did talk about one last toner from 2019 favorites, and that is the Youth to the People adaptogen soothe and hydrate activated mist I did actually just talk about this in my last video where I gave you guys my recommendations from the Sephora sale so I've recently talked about this but I'm gonna talk about it again since it was on my 2019 favorites I think this is my second bottle of this product I will not hesitate to purchase it again I absolutely love it it has a beautiful fine mist it contains lactic acid which is an ingredient that I really love and recommend for those of you who are interested in embarking working on AHAs in your skincare. It's super gentle, very hydrating. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend this. This is still a favorite. Next up are the oils that I chose from 2019 as favorites. First up is the Laurel Antioxidant Oil Serum, which I still have and love. I just think that this is a beautiful, beautiful oil serum with just whole plant ingredients that just makes your skin feel so nurtured. And I have found that it's a really beautiful serum to use if I've gotten too much sun. I'm I'm really good about sunscreen, but every once in a while, sometimes you do get an inadvertent uh, little burn, and sometimes that will happen on my shoulders. So I've actually used this serum on my shoulders, which has helped so much, you know, just calm down uh, inflammation from, you know, just a little sunburn. I love to mix this with the Heart of Gold uh, Sweet Briar Hydrating Nectar that I talked about. Love blending those. So yes, this still continues to be a favorite oil of mine. And then I also mentioned the Live Botanical first light brightening oil 
This still continues to be a favorite of mine. It does have vitamin C in it. It has a vitamin C ester, very stable in this formula, um, non-irritating to the skin. So if you are looking for a vitamin C serum, an oil-based serum, I highly recommend this one. So moving along, I did choose the Sunday Riley CEO 15% vitamin C serum as one of my favorites from 2019. I don't have the full bottle anymore. The only size I have of this product is this little mini travel size that that I got from Sephora. Now I still do really like this product. It is more of a lotion, not so much, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily consider this a serum. It definitely feels more like a lightweight lotion to me. And I do actually still really like this product, but in terms of a vitamin C product, I actually have been loving the Sahara Rose vitamin C serum. Um, I do like that one better at this point. I really think I prefer sort of that water-based serum that has vitamin C in it. So that's just what I'm enjoying right now. Uh, that one from Sahara Rose, I'm blanking on the official name, but it is their vitamin C brightening serum. That also contains moth bean in it, and I really love moth bean as an ingredient. So I've just been more drawn to that one over this past year. So the Sunday Riley has sort of moved off to the side and it's been replaced by the Sahara Rose vitamin C serum. As for my favorite cream from 2019, I chose the Iolette Opulence Cream. I have talked about this many times on my channel. As you can see, I get a lot of use from this product. It has continued to be a favorite cream of mine. I love the texture. I love the scent. I love the color. I love everything about it. And it has definitely been a continued favorite of mine. I did choose a couple of balms from 2019 as my favorites. I chose the Heart of Gold Moon River Balm, as well as the Cora Organics Noni Glow Face Balm. So let's talk about Heart of Gold's Moon River Renewal Balm. I think this might be my second jar of it. I'm pretty sure I've completed a full jar. And then you can see I've gotten through a very substantial amount of this jar as well. And this is one of those balms that kind of has a drier texture. It's not a super juicy um, type of balm where the oils feel really loose in it. It is quite firm. I absolutely love the texture of this. I do prefer kind of a drier balm. The scent is very strong on frankincense, which I do love, but if you're not a big fan of frankincense, this might not be the one for you. But I do love this balm. It does continue to be a favorite of mine. Um, I don't reach for it as much as maybe the uh, Live Botanical um, Barrier Balm, uh, which I really, really love a lot, but I do still really love it. I do really enjoy it. And like I said, if you love the scent of frankincense, then you definitely want to check this out. And then like I mentioned, the other balm that I chose as a favorite from 2019 was the Cora Organics Noni Glow Face Balm. I actually don't have that anymore, but I do think I've gone through either two or three of them. I do really, really love that balm. But like I said, I've just kind of moved away from using balms as frequently as I used to, so I just haven't felt the need to replenish um, that particular product, but I definitely would get it in the future. Um, I really love it. I love the texture. I love the ease of use that it comes in a stick. But balm. yeah, as I said, I just haven't been reaching for balms as much as I used to. So just haven't really felt the need to replace it, even though I still do really, really like it. I did choose one eye product from 2019, and that was the Natural Logic Eternal Eyes. Now this was a travel sample that Tony sent me. Tony's the creator of Natural Logic. So I do think that if you purchase this off the website, it is a larger size, possibly 10 mils. And it is a roller ball, which I do really appreciate. So while I really do enjoy this product and it is one of my favorite oil-based serums for under the eyes, I can't say it's an absolute favorite still right now because I've been really gravitating more towards using serums under my eyes or creams under my eyes, like thick uh, sort of viscous type of creams under my eyes. So while I do really like this one and I did just use it the other night to kind of refresh my memory, it has a beautiful texture. It doesn't migrate into my eyes. It doesn't migrate down. It just stays put, which is really nice for an under eye uh, oil treatment. But like I said, I just have been preferring the uh, serum based ones, like the water-based serums as well as cream. So I still really like this, not a total favorite anymore, but if you love the oil-based uh, under eye treatments, then I do highly recommend this. So I did choose a couple of masks back in 2019 as my favorites. One of them is the Live Botanical Antioxidant Mask. I'm sure you guys can guess that yes, this is still one of my favorites. I have mentioned it several times here on my channel. I really love the texture and kind of the uniqueness of this product. This is my second jar of it and I love 
everything about it. I love the scent. I love the texture. It is a very creamy texture. And what you do is you take like a teaspoonful, put it in a little bowl, mix it around with a little bit of water. And then it becomes just sort of like this beautiful, creamy texture, um, a little bit looser than how it is in the jar, obviously, because you're activating it with water. It's actually kind of hard to describe, but it's just a lovely, lovely experience. I love to reach for this particular mask when I want to really nurture my skin. I really want it to feel hydrated and kind of plumpy. Uh, this is definitely one of those masks that you could use before an event or before going to work or whatever, if you're concerned about uh, irritation from a mask. Um, for me, at least personally, I have never experienced any irritation or redness from this mask. It just makes my skin feel, like I said, very plump, uh, very soothed, very moisturized. So I can't recommend this highly enough. I think it's a very interesting, unique mask. And if you haven't given it a peek, I I definitely recommend that you do. And then the other mask that I talked about is the Fibenia Divine uh, All Seasons Biocellulose Mask. I'm actually not gonna talk about this that much right now because you might be aware that uh, Fibenia is no longer Fibenia, it's actually Yina. Um, and they did a rebranding and I was just on their website. These masks are no longer available, at least currently. I don't know if they're going to be reintroducing them in a different form or in a different way. So while they do continue to be a favorite of mine, I only have two left, so I'm definitely going to savor those last two just in case they aren't going to be bringing them back. But yes, absolutely love this mask, but I'm gonna stop talking about it since it's not available at this time. Okay, so next up are the retinoid products that I was loving in 2019. I guess 2019 was a big retinoid year for me because I have four of them. Let's talk about the Jordan Samuel Retinol Oil first. Um, I don't have that anymore. I used it all up and I think I've been through either one or two of them, I can't remember really, really love this product. I highly recommend it, especially if you are looking for a gentle retinol. Maybe it's the first time you've ever tried a retinol and you wanna see how your skin reacts to it. Uh, I definitely recommend checking this one out because the oil mixture, like the blend of plant oils he has in there is beautiful. There's no scent, which I really appreciate. And then again, the as I mentioned, the retinol is super gentle in it. So I still love it. I would definitely be getting it in the future. In fact, I typically do a Jordan Samuel uh, order at least once a year, if not twice a year, to replenish my favorite cleansers from him. But in my next order, I think I probably will go ahead and grab another one of his retinol oils. In that 2019 favorites video, I did also mention the Sunday Riley High Dose Retinoid Serum. Now that one has fallen off my favorites list. I really don't like it anymore. There was something about the scent that I just was not enjoying. Uh, their products do contain silicones, which for me is not a complete deal breaker. Uh, but I just kind of felt like since I wasn't really enjoying the scent anymore, there was something about the texture that just wasn't as enjoyable. I think maybe it is because there are silicones in there. So like I said, that one has fallen to the wayside. I don't really see myself purchasing that again in the future. I did also mention in that video the Drunk Elephant A Passioni Retinol Cream, which I still have and I do still really like. I have the tube. This is the original format of the product, but I do believe that they have changed it into their typical bottle that they have that has a little pump on the top. I have never had any problems with this tube, and in fact, I wish it still was in the tube. I know that Drunk Elephant has been problematic. I don't know if it's been lately. I do think there have been some issues in the past when it has come to you know them being called in in terms of maybe some offensive things they have posted, possibly around cultural appropriation. I haven't been following it too closely. I actually don't follow them on social media, so I'm not exactly sure what went down. If you have information about it that you would like to share, please do so down below. So I don't know when it comes right down to it, if I would purchase this again, I don't really know if I feel like, you know, supporting them. So anyway, just not too sure how I feel about wanting to give my uh, monetary support behind this brand. So I will leave that up to you to decide what feels good for you personally. And then lastly, I did talk about my prescription strength retinoid. So this is the, let's see, tretinoin cream 0.1%. 
I have not reached for this lately. I think it's maybe been two, maybe three months since I've used this. And I do fluctuate with how frequently I use this. I'm actually really lucky in that I don't, knock on wood, I don't really get that retinizing thing where my skin gets really irritated or flaky. I think it's pretty resilient um, at this point in terms of using this particular prescription strength. So I can actually go many months without using it and then I can reintegrate it into my skincare and then I can use it two or three times a week without any issues. So I can't really tell you exactly how much I've been using this over the last two years since 2019, but suffice to say, I still do really like it. I really like its effects on my skin. Um, obviously, if you're interested in a prescription strength retinol, you do need to check in with your dermatologist to get that prescription. But yeah, I still really like it even though I haven't been using it over the last few months, I'm sure that I will start using it again in the future. So I did also mention a couple of sunscreens for the face. The first one that I talked about back in that video was the Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47. I also mentioned this in my last Sephora video. I did put it on my recommendations if you guys are interested in purchasing something from the Sephora sale and you need a sunscreen, I do highly recommend this one. It continues to be a favorite. I love using it. And what I do is I mix it with the My Shell Sun Shield SPF 50. I think I have Nude. Nude is my color, which is light to medium. And I do believe they have a darker one for darker skin tones. I did mention this in my 2019 video as well. And what I like to do is actually mix these two together, mainly because the My Shell does tend to be a little bit on the dry side. So if you have oily skin, combination skin, this alone might work really well for you because I feel like it has a little bit more of a matte type of finish. For me, I need something a little bit more emollient. I like a little bit more of a dewy sheen. So that is why I really, really love mixing these two together because the Josie Marin uh, SPF for your face definitely has that very emollient texture, which I really do love, but I think putting them together really balances them out well and gives me that dewy skin-like finish that I really prefer. So I did mention a few makeup favorites from 2019, one of which was the uh, Nudes Matte uh, All Over Bronze Color from Nude Sticks. This is in Sunkissed. I actually have it on today. Hopefully it's not too washed out. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day here, springtime day here in Portland, which I am just absolutely loving, but sometimes I can tend to get a little little bit washed out, but I will show you what the stick and color looks like here. It's just a really beautiful sun-kissed color, just like the name suggests. I love just dotting on a little bit here on my cheeks. This will hopefully show you what it looks like a little bit more. I'm just using the viewfinder as my mirror, so excuse me there. But yeah, this is what the color looks like. It just kind of gives you that look of, you know, just being out in the sun, getting slightly sunburned without actually getting sunburned, because hopefully you have your SPF on. Now, similar to Drunk Elephant, I think that Nude Sticks as a brand did come under some fire. I think maybe it was around their color range, not having a very broad offering for people who do have darker skin tones. I don't follow them on social media. The only reason why I'm privy to this is I think I saw under an Alana Davison video where she was talking about nude sticks. There were some comments down below that referred to this controversy and, you know, people being disappointed in nude sticks uh, regarding their color inclusivity. I can't really speak to it. I didn't see anything firsthand, so I'm not really sure what went down. Again, if you have any information about what happened with nude sticks, please do fill us in down in the comments below. So I don't think I'm ever going to go through this entire thing. I mean, I just have so many bronzers that I enjoy. I do still use this and I enjoy using it. I don't know as if Nude Sticks as a brand, I necessarily feel like I need to amplify on my channel, but this was on my list from 2019. So I felt like I needed to include the Nude Sticks as well as the Drunk Elephant products in this video. So if you wanna do your own research, decide for yourselves if these are two brands you want to support moving forward. Again, if you have information about either of these situations that happen, please do share that with us down below. And then I'm happy to say here, we're going to end on a positive note. Uh, the next two products that I have here to show you are from Olio Oso, a Portland brand, so local to me. And I really love Paola, the owner of Olio Oso. They are really wonderful. Um, they have such a great focus on sustainability. I'm not gonna go into all the details here, but they are just a really top-notch brand. Um, my first favorite from 2019 from Olio Oso was their Abisco lipstick. 
This is what the packaging looks like. I just feel like their packaging is so cute, especially on these lipsticks. And then this is what Ibisco looks like. And I do have this on my lips today. I'll put on a little bit more so that you can see the color. The texture of these lipsticks are really unique. They're kind of on the dry matte side, but yet they feel very creamy and very comfortable on the lips. I've had this on my lips for a couple of hours now. It doesn't feel dry at all. It still feels comfortable on the lips. So if you're looking for a lipstick that is nicely pigmented, that is not in that sheer category, then these are a lipstick you might want to look into. And then lastly, I did put their lip gloss. I think they call them their lip sheens. Uh, this is in Rosa Rosa, such a beautiful sort of neutral, cool type of color. I don't have this on my lips today, but I will add it on top. Just to give you an idea of what that does to the lipstick underneath it, these also are really lovely in terms of texture. They feel great on the lips, feel very moisturizing. So these two together, I think are a really lovely combination, but if you're more of a lipstick person, then obviously I would recommend the, the lipstick. Um, I think they call them maybe lip lusters. I'm not exactly sure, but the lipstick in this type of tube. But then of course, if you're more of a lip gloss fan, then the lip sheen would be for you. And if you are a sort of neutral pink, cool pink uh, lip color lover, then I just, I can't recommend these highly enough. And these do still continue to be a favorite of mine. And then just a brief interlude here in 2019, I said my favorite from that year was Saul. We had just gotten him a few months prior and he continues to be my favorite. He's such a sweetie pie. He's a favorite of my whole family, obviously, <laughs> but he's such a cutie. So here's Saul. He's gonna wanna jump down in a minute. Bye, Saul. All right, I think that is it. I'm looking around at everything that I pulled from my 2019 favorites list, and I think I got them all. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was interesting for you to see how things have actually stayed pretty consistent for me. There are only a few products here that have kind of fallen by the wayside for me. Overall, these are all still favorites of mine that I am still really loving. If you have any questions about anything that I did not answer from these products from that past video, please do let me know. And I keep talking about this PR video that's coming down the pike. That will be my next video. Like the Sephora sale video that I did, the one that I want to do for my PR does have some time sensitive uh, information in it. So that will be coming uh, next week. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in that next video. Bye.